This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. Over 3,500 years ago, the Israelites stood at the base of Mount Sinai, pledging their allegiance and love to Yehovah in a marriage covenant that would last forever. Then in 2023, in an unplanned event at that very spot, Miles Jones and his fiancee Catherine enacted their own marriage ceremony. And what happened next is truly miraculous. It's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. There you are, what a week. Shabbat Shalom to our fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. Hey, this episode is gonna be so cool. You're gonna love this. Yeah. Like a scene out of a movie, Yehovah showed up at a wedding at the foot of Mount Sinai last year, and we've got it on video. No kidding, because our guests were there. Not just there, but Miles Jones and his wife Catherine were the ones getting married. And our other guest, Patrick McGuire, was the guy who got it on video. It's incredible. You've got to see this to believe it. That's coming up in just a second. But before we do that, let's have a chat with the founder of A Rude Awakening International, Michael Rude. Welcome, Michael. Oh, thanks, God. It's good to be here. It is good to have you here. I'm happy you're up here. Now, um, you know, we've done a lot of stuff uh, this last couple of weeks here with um, pa Patrick and with uh, Miles and their expeditions to Sinai and all that's going on there with the city of Neom encroaching on the area and all this type of thing. But ironically, in all the years that you've talked about that, you know, Saudi Arabia was kind of off limits, wasn't it? Oh yes, it was dangerous to go there. Yeah, and you, you yeah. never could go there. I mean, you talked all about- uh, Yeah, I tried twice to go over there. Oh, I didn't even know that, you did? Yeah, I was in uh, uh, down, down south, and I tried to get in the, to, to Saudi Arabia, but I couldn't do it. Well, I remember too in the, uh, what was it? Um, uh, the Red Sea crossing in the boat when you when you jumped off the boat yeah that and they didn't allow you even to get close to the shore there you had to kind of stay off of it didn't you yeah yeah we, 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 uh, they have boats that are on the Red Sea but they're not allowed to stop anywhere near there ah uh -huh. because it's off limits I wonder if that is changing even in the Red Sea now. And I'm glad to see that Miles and Patrick, are, you know, Saudi Arabia is being a lot more friendly about having folks in there and because they want to build this whole tourism thing with the city of Neom. Yeah, they have gunships that patrol the Red Sea in mm. the area. So it's dangerous. Yeah, especially right now too with everything going on in Israel. That's not, yeah. <laughs> probably not a friendly place to be right now. But So now you've been to some pretty interesting places yourself though uh, with Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, uh, that was an hour and a half south of my house. Really? Yeah. So that wasn't I, too long ago. I was there many times. And you actually camped out at Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, uh, out there with the lions. <laughs> That's crazy. There are real lions out there. Really, like wild, Mountain wild cats. lions. Really? Yeah. The, uh, we have the imp uh, picture with the imprint of the uh, lion laying down in the ash. Mm. That's crazy. Oh, the ash of the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. So how did that, okay, so going there, that's how you actually know that this really was Sodom and Gomorrah. So there's still ash oh, there yeah. when that happened? It's covered with millions of chunks of brimstone. And it only appears three places on planet Earth. And that is you know, all three places are in Israel. Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim. And there were all the four cities that were destroyed. Everybody forgets about those last two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the scripture though. Yeah, it is indeed. And so when you go there and, and when people just see where this site is, they see what looks to be just cliff faces. It almost looks like Badlands or something like that. But is that what it is or is it something else we're looking at? Yeah, you're really looking at buildings uh, that have been incinerated to pure ash. Hmm. And so when you go out there, you can see it. And in the distance, it looks like just rock formations, but it's really the buildings. 
Right, and that's because of in that area they used uh, there were the, the tar pits and they used that to make the walls. Right, so <laughs> if you make tar to make your walls and then brimstone comes down, yeah, that's going to light a fire. It on fire. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are pits all near there, and it's all quicksand. Mm. So you have to be very careful. I, you... I wasn't careful once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you slip into something? Oh, yes, I did. And I started to sink, and I got out of there fast. Wow. So there's literal quicksand out there, yeah. too. Is it, and is it amongst the ash where you couldn't really see? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now, in that ash, you brought home a few souvenirs, as I understand. Oh yeah, I have the largest collection of brimstone in the world. <laughs> I keep it here, right here at the office. Too. Yes, and if you're okay with it, we'd like to distribute some of that to our ambassador club members. Okay, you, all right? you can do that. Okay, yes. well, there you have it. Okay, so at the bottom of your screen, we've got a special thing going on right now with the ambassador club members. If, if they oh. donate a whole year's worth at once, Angie is sending them this beautiful bag with a, a copy of the Chronological Gospels in there, along with a couple of other things. And she also has some of your brimstone there. If you're okay with it, she'll throw some of those in. Oh, well, that's really special. Yeah. Because I can't get any more. <laughs> no, that's right. I think it would be pretty hard to smuggle out of Israel. You had It was funny because I've seen that, that bucket around. It's literally a, a, a clear plastic tote in the office that's yeah. full of blue brimstone. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it was tr big trouble getting it here. Was it? Yeah, yeah. They arrested me. Oh, I didn't even know they went through that. Oh kind of yeah, trouble. the 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 people at the airport arrested me, and they kept my antelope skull, and the the and it was a big scene. Did they? And why did they let you have the brimstone? They didn't see that. <laughs> they missed it. There's a tub full of it. <laughs> yeah, they they saw the animal skull, and so they were all excited about that. Oh, and and they they didn't even open the case with all the brimstone in it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, never mind all those rocks that proved the Bible from four thousand yeah. years ago. That's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a thing to them. Goodness. Okay. Well, we're gonna see more miraculous stuff tonight from Miles and Patrick. Here's what you're gonna see. Yeah, just read Exodus 19. That's Man. exactly what was happening while we were there. Exactly the big wind, the cloud covering the top of the mountain. That is crazy. The shofar. Yeah, you don't need to see it. Here's, is here's how it went down. It's right in front of you. <laughs> it it certainly could have been, and we uh, we definitely, uh, like like Miles said, we're still living in that space. Uh, Gosh. And we, we're, we're very pleased to bring this stuff uh, and the rarity of that, though. I mean, like, I don't know if yeah. people saw the first episode. If you haven't seen it, you know, go back and see it. But, like, they get, what did you say, half an inch of rain a year? Uh, they get half an inch of rain every 10 every years. Every 10 years. So they had an inch of rain every 20 years. And this was like, <laughs> and you're sitting like there 100 after, years of rain going on there. Yeah, literally, for like 100 years of rain, the torrent of, like we saw, the, yeah. the water spilling last oh, episode. Yeah. And this happens a half hour after you get married at the foot of Mount Sinai. Oh, I mean like immediate after. All right, so there you have it. Over 3,500 years ago, the Israelites stood at the base of Mount Sinai, and in 2023, in an unplanned event at that very spot, Miles Jones and his fiance Catherine enacted their own marriage ceremony. And what happened next is truly miraculous. Stay tuned for the incredible story right after the Kiddush with Michael. Meet us back here, two minutes. What does it mean to be a man? Is it what the world says? If that's true, why are there so many broken lives, broken homes, and broken spirits when men do things the world's way? So many men will say yes when it's convenient, and then when it's time to cash in that yes, oh, it's too difficult, my wife's unhappy, I got a thing going on. No, you said you would be there. In this month's Love Gift Teaching, Biblical Manhood, survivalist teacher, firearms expert, emergency response instructor, entrepreneur, and servant of the Most High, Bear Independent, reestablishes the simple biblical model of what Yehovah expects of men in every aspect of their lives. This teaching is not available anywhere online, but we'll give it to you as our thanks for supporting A Rude Awakening International. When you donate $50 as a love gift to this ministry in March, we'll send you 
Biblical Manhood with Bear Independent on DVD or Blu-ray. Donate $100 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood plus a 40-ounce stainless steel insulated tumbler with encouraging verses from the Bible plus a matching prayer journal. Donate $300 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood, the matching stainless steel tumbler and prayer journal, and a limited edition clay plaque, hand-painted in Israel, featuring pomegranate artwork and 24 karat gold accents. These gifts are a limited time offer from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Thank you. Your donations ensure that important teachings like biblical manhood keep coming from a Rood Awakening International. Use your smartphone to scan the QR code on your screen to donate now and receive these limited time gifts. Or call 888-766-3610. Or get your gifts online with a donation at monthlylovegift.com. If you like what you see on Shabbat Night Live, you'll love the bonus episodes. Now available only on the MichaelRue.tv app. These bonus episodes dive deep to give you more serious study, cutting edge content, and righteous raves you won't find anywhere else. It's Michael Rude Uncut. Sign up now to get the MichaelRude.tv app free for 14 days. It's everything Michael Rude plus all new bonus episodes you won't find anywhere else. Sign up to watch now at MichaelRude.tv. The Apostle Paul said that Yeshua nailed the dogmas, the doctrines and commandments of men, of the arche and exousia, that he overcame, that he nailed their commandments, their man-made dogmas to the cross. And because of that, we are not to allow any of the arche and exousia, any of the religious authorities of men who made up their own commandments to judge us because every one of the feasts of the Lord are prophetic shadow pictures of good things to come. So don't let any pagan, let no religious authority judge you concerning the Sabbath, the new moons. And on the Sabbath, we do not allow the world to judge us and tell us what to do. We know that Yeshua paid the price for us. And the last night he was with his disciples when he took the bread and he blessed the Most High with this blessing. Baruch atah Yehovah, Heleno melech haolam, hamotzi lechem hinaretz. He said, this represents my body, which is now broken for you. As often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of him. And then Yeshua took the cup and he said, this represents the renewed covenant in my blood. This is what this represents. This is what it's always represented. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said that prayer, Baruch Atah Yehovah Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Pari HaGothen. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. And he said, do this in remembrance of me and don't let anyone disparage you. Do this until I come again because I have made you priests and kings. Shabbat Shalom.
Last time, we talked about the miracles at Mount Sinai, both 3,500 plus years ago, and more recently with uh, our guests today, Dr. Miles Jones and Patrick McGuire. Welcome, guys. Great to be here. Now yeah, you had good to, to be back. Yeah, it's, I'm glad to see this. I'd never seen this before. Uh, Patrick, you just handed me uh, this before the cameras came on. This is something you had produced, the Writing of God uh, study journal. And uh, what I'm holding here is not even the final version now because you've uh, you know, added to this now. Mm -hmm. And apparently when someone goes through this study guide and the course that you all have, uh, you can get three college credits for that? Is that yeah, right? Yeah. It's accredited now. Yeah. Through Remnant University. Wow, very good. Well, this is important because this is the means, the point of the spear by which the secular universities and such will attack our faith and the faith of our children, strip them of their faith by convincing them that the exodus never happened. It's just a myth. It didn't happen when the Bible says it happened or where the Bible says it happened mm. or the way the Bible says it happened. Well, all of that is false and we have a mountain of evidence to prove, no, no pun no intended. Pun intended. <laughs> to, <laughs> kind of sort of. To prove that, no, there it is. <laughs> we can show you exactly the chronology of the Bible is the correct one. Mm -hmm. Using scientific evidence, we can show you exactly how we know where the mountain is there. Obviously the evidence is there, but there's a, a great deal of evidence. But this takes some study. It's, but this is what every Christian needs if they want to be able to defend the Bible because this is where they'll attack them right. on the Exodus. Exactly, because They Mount think Sinai, they've got that down, that they can absolutely prove that that didn't happen. Right, and, and if they're they can, wrong. And if they can prove that didn't happen, then what is who, who's Jesus and right. nothing. What nothing does that say about the that. rest of the Bible? This story is inaccurate. Well, unreliable, what does that say about the message of the Bible and the rest of the Bible? Well, it mm. must not be reliable either. Well, we had looked last time some of the evidence, <laughs> a lot of uh, wonderful photos you'd, you'd shown us, some stuff that just by turning a corner in that area, we discovered new stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like amazing things. And so now we want to continue that because we didn't get to finish. And there was a great story that I want to get Patrick to tell about the, the wedding, and we'll get to that. But first of all, what we're looking at here is what? Moses' altar. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're at Moses' altar, and you're looking uh, east, and you see the, the, the cattle or the, the, the uh, I don't know what, corrals? Uh, well, yeah, they are corrals, they're stone corrals. These are beautiful pictures. You can see the cut stone columns of the 12 tribes there. So here's Dr. Jones standing uh, behind the, th the four slatter, uh, slaughter areas uh, or the altars. So the, where it says Moses' altar, that's the large one. So that's the first one. That's the one you would think would be where the bulls and mm -hmm. you know, cattle would be. And then there's smaller, a uh, couple, was it three or two? Yeah, there's three. Three, three more mm -hmm. uh, areas. Uh, and the Saudis actually did a drill down at one point they to did. see what's going on. Why don't you tell them a little bit about that? They did, you know, they, they drilled so that we have, someone has used a trowel, they did a core, and what they found were, they found organic material, which is material that's once alive, ashes, animal waste, and, mm. and bones and things of that sort. Exactly what you'd expect huh. to find at a sacrificial altar for animals. Now, some people might say, oh, well, come on, that was just a, an ibis who died there a long time ago. But well, they're like the found at all really, the altars. You yeah, know. and like the ash really proves that because they, yeah. there was something burned here and it takes man to light a fire. And well, they set themselves something. on fire, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. From the burning Spontaneously bush. combusting <laughs> ibis. Yeah. No, what's interesting. No, that's a good point, but this was done by... Uh, uh, Saudi archaeologists, mm. you know, so. Uh, and what it, did they, con did they conclude the same thing you did? No, they didn't. I think they've changed their mind now, uh -huh. but they didn't want this to be the, the, the mountain. Uh -huh. So they said exactly the opposite, right? What, what did they say? And it was, all, it was all fenced off. That whole part of the mountain's fenced off. Huh. But God removed that fence with a flash flood and mm -hmm. part of the fence is, is, is down, so we were just right up. Huh. Uh, you said it was cool. the foundations of a building, but what building has a foundation yep. four feet apart? Yeah. How, how useful is that going to be? Some, some kind of <laughs> like yeah. ancient... Uh, no, it wasn't. Party. It, it wasn't. A, it obviously was not the foundation of a building. No. It was exactly what we said it was. Now, to put it in perspective, uh, the, the burning bush was there. Okay, we couldn't find the ashes for that, but you know, <laughs> the burning bush was there because it's not consumed. Because oh, <laughs> Jehovah told Moses to bring the people back 
to there. Mm, he said that. Mm. Uh, to sacrifice, okay? Mm-hmm. And then they were there for 18 months or so. Built, uh, they were, so this was a very functional uh, uh, sacrifice area. It wasn't just a one-time deal mm-hmm. uh, for 18 months while they were building the tabernacle and all that, uh, which was in the valley beyond, we believe, just just probably, east of uh, Aaron's right altar. Probably right in between in the two altars. You can see them. There's one is right across the valley from us. Uh, yeah, because building that, the tabernacle, that we have to remember, that didn't... That wasn't just an overnight thing either. No, no they had to have a kiln. They had to have, you know, they're, they had, they're, they're making they're, brass. They're doing silver. They're really bronze. Gold. They're, there uh, are the remains of kilns. Gold. Wow. Yes, there are. And wow. our next trip, we will find them. <laughs> uh, and, and they have been discovered, but we, we want to know exactly. And you will exactly. take the new road to get there. Yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of going at three hours from the hotel to get here each day was, was a lot of work. And, of course, you had to go back then. Yeah, right? that's all. Mm-hmm. All right, so this picture. Uh, is just a bit from the side of, of uh, where the bulls uh, were, and you can start seeing. This was taken on the day of the wedding. You can see in the corner uh, the team starting to gather. The party goers. The party goers. Uh, here it is now from where the pillars are at the base of that. And uh, here's a shot that I took off the video with Dr. Jones. Uh, where the, at the pillars, and they're kind of scattered around there, but they're marble, worked marble. On all the everything else is natural stone fit together, but these are worked marble, and they're perfect two and a half foot diameter. They're all the same size. Well, Some are a little higher, uh, but they're all basically the, 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 the circumference the is circumference, about the yeah. same, yes, but the yeah. height is not always. And then there's uh, some other rocks that maybe have been platforms or something. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so uh, this is a, a, a rock that we actually could hold in our hand. Um, and the next video, or the next video, the next slide uh, is the pillar. And then this is where we're planning the wedding. Uh, and then this is, the, this is us, okay? So this is where I wanna stop and tell you a story. If that's okay. Please yeah. do, yes. We've been waiting a week to stop <laughs> So, <laughs> Okay, so uh, we are going through the ketubah, which is uh, basically uh, Exodus 19 to 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is where we are. It is a wedding ceremony it is, between Jehovah and his chosen people. And so we're reenacting this, okay? Uh, and that wasn't planned either. That wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't planned. We went just to a wedding, but this... Uh, Art got a little carried away and, and really went with it. And uh, well, the and team wanted to participate in it too. Yes, so they we wanted, wanted to be, be part, part of, of agreeing we, to to do this marriage with Yehovah. And as people. it turns out, we also <laughs> reenacted that covenant with the Lord. And as we're doing this, I'm like. And people are starting to kick off. You can see some of them are, are, are already uh, got their shoes off uh, and bare uh, sock feet anyways. Uh, and I'm thinking, it's starting to hit me. You know, I mean, I'm working, I've been working this whole time, but you know, you, you're pausing now and, and, and the spirits just started giving me this image of, yes, the whole body was there mm-hmm. of the uh, the remnant, mm-hmm. as well as uh, what they call the uh, mixed multitude. Mixed thing. multitude. Now, what's that? It's a mixed multitude. I'm sure the slaves said, "This is our ticket. Let's get out of here. We're gonna go. We're gonna go with Moses because Pharaoh's not. <laughs> it's not working." And so they took off. They did the Passover. They did everything, and they came and they went through the the sea, which is a idea of baptism or you know being being separated to the Lord. And so this mixed multitude is standing there too and they're saying we will do this. You will be our God. We will we will do your covenant, right? Mm-hmm. And we're doing the same thing now. Mm-hmm. And it just hit me. This is when the first Gentiles were grafted in yeah. to the tribes of Israel. Mm-hmm. And actually if you look in numbers where uh, the different tribe sizes, you know, numbered out. And you notice how small Levi is. And I always tell my studies, he says, that's because no one wanted to be grafted into, uh, they're not going to get any land. <laughs> <laughs> their, their possession, they, and they weren't able to get into to, to, to Levi. But it hit me that, wow, 
this is, this is really, I mean, the Spirit of God is really moving. It, that Now we're new covenant people there reenacting the same thing. And I think it pleased and the Lord. that's the first. Yeah. And that's the first. I mean, when we say this is the first in 3,500 years, because no one could. And, no, and then the last 2,000 years, really, no one's known about it. Mm-hmm. Since, mm-hmm. since Paul was out there, that was pretty much it. And so uh, that's why this archaeology is all over the place. Uh, and, and it's hard to get to, but soon it, it will be open. But I'm like, wow, okay, Lord, this is real. Mm-hmm. And I've been kind of in that space now since then. Mm. And every time I'm editing or working with this stuff, which I've been doing since March, uh, is uh, I'm reminded of that. You know, wow, yes, we are grafted into these people. These are our ancestors. And God's intention was for all people to, to come to the knowledge and saving knowledge of Yeshua wow. and, to, and to come in covenant with him. Yeah. So, and it just happened at that place. It's right. reenacted in a church somewhere. I know. This is and it, at it's, Mount Sinai. It's, and then, it's amazing. 30 minutes later, the storm happens and all that. God answers. And our people are saying, he heard us, he heard us, he heard us. And he's responding. It's clearly a response from him. Wow. The whole weight of it is still sinking in. I think it'll be sinking in for the rest of my life, to be honest. Mm. Amen. You know, of what happened Mm. there, what what transcribed there. But we were right on the cusp of change, Right. And things are changing in the Middle East right now, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So here, this photo, I'm gonna go through a little quick sequence. So as, as we're eating, and I, and I did lock down my shot to get that, that time lapse, but just a quick in slides, you can see that these are starting to roll in. And then pretty soon, the whole mountain is, it, it, I mean, look at those clouds over that mountain there. And then the mountain starts disappearing because the clouds come down over it. Mm-hmm. And there's thunder, there's lightning, and then <laughs> there's, there's rain and hail. It's like you're watching the mighty movie wind. of the actual, like, it, of the... You're pinching yourself. It's, almost, it's, it's, really it's not even a movie. It's like going back in time yeah. and actually being there when it happened because it, here's the stuff in front of you. Yeah, just read Exodus 19. That's Man. exactly what was happening while we were there. Exactly the big wind, the cloud covering the top of the mountain. That is crazy. The shofar. Yeah, you don't need to see it. Here's, here's, here's how it went down. It's right in front of you. <laughs> it's, it's it certainly could have been, and we, uh, we definitely... Uh, like like Miles said, we're still living in that space, uh, Gosh. and we, we're we're very pleased to bring this stuff. Uh, and to the, the rarity of that, though, I mean, like I don't know yeah. if people saw the first episode. If you haven't seen it, you know, go back and see it. But like they get, what did you say? Half an inch of rain a year? Uh, they get half an inch of rain every ten every years. Ten years. So they had an inch of rain every twenty years, and this was like. <laughs> and you're and sitting like there. Like 100 after, years of rain going on there. Yeah, literally. For like them. 100 years of rain, the torrent of like we saw, the, yeah. the water spilling last oh, episode. Yeah. And this happens a half hour after you get married at the foot of Mount Sinai. Oh, I mean like immediate after. With, With the, 12 witnesses. But Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Wow. Well, we, we couldn't have planned it. Nope. And we had no. more people, but uh, their number of They're people just, decided to go a different place. ended up being 12 at yeah. that point. That is absolutely insane. So where do we go from here? Well, we're gonna go around to the other side of the mountain. Uh, it's still the same mountain, Mount Sinai, but on the, on the uh, west side of the mountain is the split rock. And so we're gonna go there. Mm. And, uh, and this is where many of the inscriptions were actually found. Oh, really? Some were found at the base okay. of Sinai, but many others were found at Rephidim, a lot of the footprints. See, I there. think uh, maybe, I don't know how many other people assume this as well, but I always think, well, where the golden calf is and Mount Sinai, that's where everything is. And then there's not much anywhere else. Yeah. No, oh. no. It, that, this Rephidim is where he first told them to write. Mm. Right? And that, so that's what you're seeing. You're seeing actually the first literate act of the Israelites when they traced their, their, the footprints and put the alphabetic caption beside them, the triple hash mark, which is the cough. The cough, I was going to say, yes. Which literally means the palm of our hand, the sole, instep of our foot, and of course it is now the name of the letter. And they did, the for those K. who don't know, why would they trace their feet? What was the reason? Well, they were commanded to in Scripture. Where, wherever your, your footsteps shall be, whether you trace your, wherever you trace your footsteps, that will be your territory. 
So it's a territorial thing. It became their wasom, mm -hmm. their tribal sign. And that pl that plays into something that Michael always says. Michael's in the studio with us here today. Hey, from the Michael. from you know from the river. To the sea. To the sea, right? Well, yeah. To the river, to the river. Have we the heard river, that to the river. somewhere? No, that's something else. <laughs> that's, that's so different. <laughs> <laughs> From the Nile to that's the Euphrates. The, the Nile to but, the Euphrates. But that right. was so, the first deed yeah, to so, Abraham's seed right there. Right. And right. that covers, guess what? If you look on a map, that's Saudi Arabia. Yeah. The yeah. whole dang thing. And all a the bunch oil. more. <laughs> a lot oil. And all the oil. And all the oil. And all the riches that come with it. I mean, why wouldn't God promise that to his people. He knows what's underneath there. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you just a little bit of behind the scenes as we're getting there. So this first this first shot is quite common. This is a huge vista. It's the most beautiful mountains I have seen anywhere in the world. Uh, and I wished I had more copies of this, mm. of different photos. But here is our expedition. We don't need no roads. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads. Yeah, and, and yeah. so we've got- We're gonna go back in time here. We've got 11 of these guys going as fast as they can across the desert. They're kind of racing with each other. Uh, <laughs> It was, it was, you know, I don't know if we were behind schedule or whatnot. I'm trying to shoot video and it's like no, all over the place. No, I think they were just driving insanely. They're just trying to scare the Americans. They were, <laughs> I think they were driving normal. They you think know? it's normal. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's like, there's no roads here. There's just this little path, you know, and what about this wash? But you can see the, uh, uh, these trees. What kind of trees are these? These are acacia trees. That's what they made ah, the ark out of. Wow. And they made the poles that, to carry the ark out of the acacia tree. And some of these are very tall, skinny. To make that, they made their tents out of it. Uh, they, uh, you know, they make the, made the ark out of it. It's a very uh, tree. And then we get to this canyon, uh, so we're just going. And it just, these are, it's hard to tell the perspective. You can see the tree and how tall that is. And we found taller canyons, but then we finally get to uh, the rock at Horeb. Mm -hmm. And this, you think of a rock, you know, it's just a little boulder thing, right? <laughs> no, no, this is like six stories high. Yes, it's huge, it's huge. And, and uh, it takes quite a while to climb up that. He'll do about half an hour. And it's just uh, this weird outcropping that's in the middle of nowhere, as you can obviously see on the photo, it's just uh -huh. this, it's almost like God went here. We're gonna put this here. Here we are. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's kind of sp conspicuous. I mean, there's, there's not other places where there's a big boulder sitting on top of a mountain of boulders. Right. This is it. And it had uh, to be from a high space for it to flow down, right? Right. Yeah, because there is- It would just pool if it were- Well, this mountain. next photo that I'm gonna show you kind of shows that, that erosion. Mm -hmm. And then back behind there is a valley. There's another valley and the next photo. Uh, but you can see the erosion that's coming down there. Now this is a this this is a shot that Ben got from the from the uh, drone, and because I couldn't climb up this high to shoot that. And from an archaeological point, you know, not to cut you off, but so when people see this and they say erosion, oh come on, there's lots of wind out in the desert. That's not water erosion. But there's a difference between heat erosion and wind erosion and, and water erosion. There's, you can tell the difference. Okay, so this is obviously what but, kind of erosion then? Well, this is water erosion, but here's the point. Uh, Glenn Fritz, who is a geographer and geologist, he took satellite photos and discovered there is a fault line that goes right through that, and it goes down there as an aquifer. They do get water off the Red Sea. It falls on one side of the mountain and goes into the aquifer. So that aquifer... If you like rationalistic explanations, that yes, aquifer people do, so, yeah. could be tapped by Yehovah and the water come out. Yeah. Well, he can do it anyway he chooses. He can produce rock from a stone if he chooses to. But in this case, there is a fault line. There is an underground aquifer there. So water could come right up through that fault line that goes right through Well, it makes sense. Rock. It wasn't some little trickle. I mean, we're no, talking it about was millions not. of people and millions of livestock that needed to have water. Mm -hmm. So this had to be gushing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, and like you said, there's a there's a lake bed there, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's there's kind of bed. think of the spiritual side of this. But this is definitely water erosion. This, we're at there. right <clears throat> there. Miles and Catherine and Benjamin are at the very bottom of that broken area. The split. And you can imagine Moses standing beside that and hitting that, and got the elders standing there, and all of a sudden that whole thing just starts breaking and and, and coming loose. Uh, I think Tim Mahoney did a nice job of animation in his piece to, when he was talking about that. Mm. 
uh, and here I am. Uh, pointing to the rock. Pointing to the rock. I mean, I had <laughs> a torn meniscus, so I wasn't doing a lot of climbing. Uh, did you speak to the rock, though? I did <laughs> not. Uh, <laughs> I took a staff up just in case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now hold that thought. We're going to come back in just a second talk more about this. Thank you guys for bringing this. we got a lot more to talk about, so hang on a second. You guys hang on, too. Thank you for bringing these guys here. Your donations made it happen. Now people in the future will be able to see this thanks to you. Thanks for doing it. We're going to give you an opportunity to do more of it right now. Thank you. Thank you for supporting this program. You are helping get other people educated about what is real and what is not and dispel all the falsehoods. We've talked last segment about the water erosion that is not cannot be dismissed as wind erosion. So oh, yeah. we were at the split rock and uh, now we're gonna continue our journey. You can argue anything, but there's an aquifer beneath that that fault. There you go. That fault line in the split rock. You want evidence? There it is. There's mm -hmm. geological evidence. Yep. So we return to the, to the split rock, and this is our team. Uh, we're just kind of briefing. What are we gonna do now? Because we're gonna go around the other side of the split rock to this whole bluff uh, that's there uh, in what we call Rafadim. And that's where we find just a ton of, uh, of these inscriptions of the sandals and that sort of thing. And when we get that's over cool. there, they're starting to make a road again. <laughs> and there we have a greater, and these guys are like, what are you guys all coming? Because we went around their blockade and everything. We're going up here. And, <laughs> uh, and so we're, we're there, we're starting to shoot our, our stuff. And at, at the top of this, if you look straight up, you can see the backside of the split rock up there. See it? Mm, yes, okay. <laughs> okay. I, did, I should have circled right that. Right at the center of the screen there. At the almost the center, yeah. yeah. Like, it looks like a cone, right? It yeah. almost looks like the cone head or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and so from there, just turning around, there is Rafadim, okay? Mm -hmm. And so they could have, that, part of that's a lake bed. It could have been the whole thing a lake bed, but likely part of it was, and they camped around it because it's easy camping there. I mean, mm -hmm. the, uh, it's nice and level and whatnot. And the first thing we, uh, one of the first things we found right off where the road was, was an ion. You can tell about this that. This is an ion, but it's got an eyebrow over it. It comes from a, an Egyptian icon, the Eye of Ra. But this would not be Ra. This would be the all-seeing eye of Yehovah. 
Okay. Because it's got an eyebrow on it. Ayin means eye. So people say, how do you get that? All I see is a circle carved in the rock. Well, there are better pictures of it. But the thing is, this was this was at various places in the rocks. Mm. And if you've got a symbol that's being drawn in various places, there's a reason for it, you know, and it comes from the eye of Ra, which has an eyebrow right over it. So this means eye, it's got an eyebrow. It is the all-seeing eye of Yehovah. Mm. And the letter <laughs> I-N. Yeah, it is, yeah. The, it is the letter I-N, which means Is there I-N. any uh, correlation, this is sort of a left field question, but is there any, any correlation to that, to what we see on our dollar bills with a pyramid? And the all-seeing eye. That's all is, that, is that the, is that the <laughs> that eye is of Ra? The same one. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, very. It's a little difficult taking a rock and trying to make a circle. Yeah. That is probably one of the more difficult things to do when you're carving into a rock. Yeah. They tend to become straight lines when you're writing on rock. Mm. When you get on paper and stuff, those tends to become curved again. You know. So now here's a little bit hard. more artistic uh Oh, sandal, boy, look at that. very well you, done. You can it's see probably the very sandal sharp straps too. See the sandal strap. Yep. Mark the mm-hmm. sandal strap. And then the toe, the toe thing as well. Uh, that one was new. We hadn't seen. I was going to ask before. if anyone had seen that one before, because before it, the ones I'd seen, were, the outline was more. Uh, it was wider. It, this like looks like this a very one like that one there. And yeah, this, you yeah, can yeah. see the triple hash mark. That's the alphabetic inscription, which is the kaf, which literally means the soles of our feet. And because uh, it's derived from the glyphs. Now, this is the first takedown of it. In other words, you're seeing language development in process here. Hmm. It's too hard to draw the whole picture. So they just do this, the instep of the foot, like the curved line over there with the three hash mm-hmm. marks against it. And that means, and then they simplify it even further, which we have on Now, here. when you were measuring that, so you, you did that with purpose. So We're these, documenting those. So these were people's. Feet. I mean, they literally put their foot down. Yeah, yeah. It's and exactly. You probably yeah. decide what size. And, they were. and plates and trace their feet <laughs> wherever your your footprints show. Right. So the average oh. Israelite had what nine and a half? Ten. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Could be. And, and no, they were about right. And that's pretty laborious. So they started doing a shortcut, and so right there, that picture oh, okay. is the doctor doing, pointing it out. This is on the ridge, uh, uh, separating this area. Lake bed to the other area, and then we this found, is a close up found of the tons same. Of these, they would just do just, the triple hash mark. So, because it means souls are our feet. See, that's the whole idea. They went from iconography there, making icons, breaking it down to a simple symbol that means the souls are our feet. Hmm. So, and that's much easier to write. So you're seeing language development of the script happening right there before your eyes. And these are the first literate acts of the Israelites right here. Wow. Tracing and placing their, their, their footprints with the icon. Because remember, you don't do graven images. Ah. So they're putting an icon there to show, this is not a graven image, these are the souls of our feet, as uh. we were commanded to do, right? Gotcha. Wow. So I put a little two-minute video together of just slides of uh, varying uh, things that we found there. And you're going to tell us what and, these are? And we'll narrate that. Okay. I mean, so I told you that one of the big things we were looking for, we, we saw we had a few, a handful of, of maybe three or four footprints. Were there more? Because there are a lot of people. Were there more? And there were. So we found tons more footprints and the triple hash marks, which means the footprint. So, and we found all kinds of other inscriptions. This one may say rest in peace. Some of them we were not able to decipher or have not been able to decipher yet. These are the triple hash marks that they end up making in place of tracing their whole footprint. And you see them all over. And they're only a few inches wide. These are not huge they're things. Not, no, just... they're not huge. They just, they, but they're all over the rocks there and this is their, their footprint. And it's consistent. Yeah, this is a consistent. There's an eye in. That's a Teletubby, I think. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So you see, it, you just see a lot of them all over the place. So the, both of their feet bent, right? So one ama- footprint, and another ama- footprint. It's amazing. It's like seeing a, a museum in plain sight. It's sitting there right for you to see. Right. And th- these are really significant, like I said. this He told them to write at Rephidim, and they're writing. You know, that's where he first commanded them to write. Several hash marks there, but they're but they're all consistent. It's very pretty very much, similar. yeah. Some some sometimes you get four, but you know some people have more toes. Right? <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. And what is that on the right? It's, that would be a, probably a cattle motif. Okay. And this here? That's a tav. Oh, okay. Which has been a universal mark forever and ever. So these are all, and that thing on the and, right. Yeah, that's, that would be a bait probably. Okay. And, and that would be a tav if they were intending to write a letter. And here it looks like we have a person in the middle. Yeah, something. we do. Now, see, so there's the there's very nice. eye of Ra ah, right the there. Eye. Oh, okay. But you find more of them around. Uh, but that one was really good, and that was only eight feet away from the road. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. We had everybody scanning the whole area looking for these, and this is the one we saw before. So, uh, Peep got a really good workout yeah. <laughs> climbing through the rocks to find these, but I'm glad we had all those people that were willing and to. And all come. of these are about the size of a. Of a of an foot. adult foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. these they yeah. are. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Wow. I so mean, when you say, well, why three? Yeah. Right. Well, one, two, right. three. They're, they're, uh, they're basically, uh. it was an inverted bowl with three hash marks for the fingers. Okay. So that is the palm of the hand. Okay. 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 Makes and sense. Sure. So that uh, the the word the cuff actually means. The palm of the hand and the sole of the foot. It actually means the cup, cuff, the cup of the hand, or the cup. You know, the insip of your mm. foot is like a cup too. So that is the actual paleo inscription for cough. Yes, it is, and you can look at it in Strong's Strong's two seven zero six. In fact, and they'll tell you the palm of the hand, the sole of the foot. Hmm. Now, what's interesting is when we go back to the Proto Hebrew, where we start, you know, going back to Joseph area, it's more pictorial, right? Well. What did God write with his own hand, his own finger, it says. He wrote the tablets with his own mm -hmm. finger. And the second commandment, I believe, is do not have a graven image. Right. Do not before. bow down and worship them, right? And people were worshiping these hieroglyphics uh, up until about 7,500 years ago when they finally figured out what they said. <laughs> Probably mm -hmm. still are. And they're still <laughs> figuring them out. But uh, so God... Did the, the, he did the codec, if you may, on the tablets of uh, now we're going to do symbols for these sounds. Yeah. Mm. So they're symbols now. That's what's important about what we're seeing there and we're documenting is they're starting to experiment now with just the symbols instead of the pictures. This is the beginning of, of the, the alphabet, alphabet as we know it. Okay. This is the first alphabet and it was given to us on tablets of stone written by the finger of God at Mount Sinai. And that's what the people are imitating. So that's writing what's interesting those letters. about where we were. This is where the alphabet started. Mm -hmm. This is significant. Significant stuff happened there. Mm -hmm. now, when I went there with the idea, look, this is the place. Okay, mm -hmm. now let's find out what's happening there. What happened there? What is there? What actually happened there? And, and almost every day we're beginning to, to unpeel that onion of, of stuff and it'd be great to be able to go there for uh, you know a month and start really exploring. Uh, we only had we'll, we only we'll had back, five yeah. days. We're going back next March, God willing. I'll bet that you've seen these photos and you start editing and you look at them and yeah. you're looking at them over and over and over again because you're editing. I mean, have there been times where you went, wait a minute, I never saw that before. Well, yeah, I, I never I, saw the the all knowing eye of Ra before. I'd seen the symbol mm -hmm. in a longer inscription, and we've showed those longer inscriptions here, yeah. and they speak of events that come straight from the pages of Exodus. So I'd seen that, and I always wondered, what, what is that over the ayin? It looks like an eyebrow, and then we start seeing them all over the rocks there, and I put <laughs> uh -huh. two and two together. Because I'd already figured out it probably came from the, the all-seeing mm. eye of Ra, except in Hebraic form. Yeah. Which, and I'm sure you'll see, like I say, even if you, you take the photos of what you think it is, and then you'll look at it again, and you'll probably see something else eventually, too, huh, huh. that you've never even realized. Well, oh, yeah. that greater shot where we saw the backside of, I, I, we didn't see that. I just saw that in, mm -hmm. that in that still photo just a few days ago. They, oh, wait a minute. That's, we're just, we know we drove around, yeah. uh, but that's it. It's right there. And some of the younger guys... Uh, went climbing up on and to, to explore where we could find more. But on that ridge, because there is some darkened stone there, so to be able to sh you know to write on, 
Uh, there's more of that, but they're every, they're all over the place. Yeah. Almost like a minefield or something. Yeah. And I kind of wonder if maybe that's where the troops were when the, when the Amalekites came and they, you know, because it's a perfect, uh, almost a, a land uh, uh, dam kind of thing going across there mm. between these two big, huge valleys. And, and they, the Israelites could have been p- camped all around mm. the, the rock, not just in front of it. In fact, behind it there where, where Rephidim is, is a better camping area, right. uh, more level, that type of thing. From what you saw, and we know the numbers of Israelites that were out there, is it quite plausible you look at this plane and go, oh yeah, several million people could camp out here? Well, you look at it and you Plenty say, of room. it had to be God. Yeah. It had to be God. I mean, their, their, their clothes didn't, didn't wear out or anything, but just feeding and watering, uh, even if it was only like 30,000 would still be a, a major Huge. miracle. So yeah. when you and multiply that out to a million and a half or whatever, that's, that's God sustaining them in that wilderness without yes. a doubt, even though it was probably more wet and more lush but after a million people, they're cutting down all the trees and doing sacrifices it was and whatnot. It uh, was wetter, for yeah. sure. Well, you have to think about it, even like, so Charlotte, where we are here, mm-hmm. there's approximately a million people that live in Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's feeding Charlotte every, every day. day for 40 years in the middle of nowhere. Watering them too. With no access really to anything. Right. And, and water too, exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. And you think of humanitarian efforts just in, in terms of a hurricane comes or something like that. And what a feat it is Mm -hmm. just to find shelter and food and clean water for maybe a few thousand, but a million every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. It had to be easy with their animals and everything. It's supernatural. There are tons of people. It is supernatural. And they were drinking of supernatural water, I think. Mm. And certainly eating from the supernatural manna. Uh Uh, it just it's, it's mind blowing. And think think of the whole the, the whole picture that you have. You have God giving us writing at Sinai and commanding us to write, and you see it on the rocks. You have in, they fought the Amalekites there, and you, we have an inscription: "Died Amalek," along with the the the, the inscriptions. And that was found in of that Hagar place well. and her daughter Amaya. They were, yes, they were on the base of the mountain. So how can anybody doubt this place? I mean, there's so much evidence. It's it's right, the story is right there in scripture and then you see it in the rocks at Sinai. I mean, you know, it talks about Amalek. The the Amalekite died here where where he killed Amaya, Hagar and her daughter Amaya. And you see the, he tells them to write there. He gives them the writing of God. These are, Mm. these people don't have any writing. He gives it to them on the tablets of stone. And now they're writing. They're writing on the rocks all Mm. over the place. It's almost like practice. It's like. (laughs) It is like practice. You're seeing the first literate act of the, the Israelites, and it, it's all there. Like Michael said, it, it literally, the rocks are crying out. This is a, a way in which the rocks can cry out. The, it is, right, because remember what I said, this is what they're using to separate you from your faith, that, that uh, Mount Sinai, the mountain of God, is a myth. Well, mm. the rocks are crying out and saying it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And it's right I here. think that we can, one of the things that we want to do is to follow the trail of the of the basically the Israelites graffiti, uh, but you know we look at <laughs> their footprints. We look <laughs> at the idea them. of that they were sentenced to forty years in the wilderness. Right, that was a negative. Okay, but at the same time, God was raising up the first literate nation. Yeah. Mm. So that uh, that group that went with Joshua into the land were literate people. Mm-hmm. So For the Egypt, first time, Egypt was not a literate nation. No, they they, they peaked out maybe at ten percent literacy. It is estimated, but that's not much. Mm. Whereas that was the, the Hebrews and the Greeks later on had as much as fifty percent in the urban areas, sort of thing. You know, but for the common man now, for the entire yeah, tribe, that was like this was that was a massive different. step forward. Where and God commanded you teach your children, write it on your. Uh, on your doorpost, yeah. you know, write it, write, write, write. Wow! <laughs> and this is the first time that any god, if you think about it, told the people what they wanted. Mm. Yeah. You see, all the pagan gods, they don't. You, you don't know how to please them at all. 
And you never can because the goalposts keep changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. But our God, Jehovah, specifies exactly. He writes it in stone. You do this, this, this and this. I'll do this, this, and this for you. You know. And and it was the beginning. That's that's important because the 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 covenant is a contract between us and Him, right? Mm And so if we do the things he asks us to do, he will definitely do the things he promised he would give us. Mm-hmm. And he did exactly that to the Israelites. He gave them, you know, houses that they didn't build and vineyards that they didn't plant. And he gave them a land that they didn't, they didn't pay for. It was, they conquered it. And he gave them all of that, exactly as he had promised. Mm. Think so, about it, the first book was published at Mount Sinai. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a good way of thinking about it. And, no, it is. It is. And so God time. is showing us in the Torah how to approach him, mm-hmm. how to please him, mm-hmm. but also how to eat, how to uh, it, sanitation, all that stuff was there. It was discipling a nation right there. And it mm-hmm. began at Mount Sinai, continued in the wilderness, and then went into it went into Israel. And now we're finding all of that, that alphabetic writing that we see, we can follow it from Goshen to Mount Sinai, now into the Promised Land at Joshua's altar. They found, they have found tablets with these same, the same alphabet on it. Mm, so now there's evidence of this same thing. Yeah. To connect, of the con- connecting uh, the dots of footprints of the Israelites. The human the how-to, way, if you will. There we <laughs> all the way from Egypt into the Promised Land. Wow. It's, it's all there now. Can you guys come back next week? <laughs> yeah, we'll okay. Make, well, yeah. I think we have more to say here. I mean, if, if, from what I see, obviously there is more. All right, so thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for supporting this program. Thank you for making it happen. There's more to come next week, so gather your friends, gather your family. If they haven't seen anything so far, get them on the next one, because this is going to be spectacular. Until then, we will see you next week. Shavua Tov and Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new michaelrood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.